Hey guys, that's your commander today in Ray Shadow Legends. I am not alone. I am being joined by Big Papa Drock. Drock, welcome back to the channel, man. How you doing, man? Dude, thank you so much for having me back, man. I am doing awesome, Ash. I am thrilled to have you. I have been on this hot streak of awesome collaborations, and I know it's going to continue because we just did a collaboration on your channel. And honestly, I didn't tell you this, but half the video, I was like, dude, I wish this was on my channel. This is really good stuff here. So. <laughs> Don't even think about it. Little jealousy, but I'm here to get some awesome content for my viewers. But the good news is, is you guys can go ahead and check out that video as well. But first, today's video is brought to you by Watcher of Realms. Take a look at Valeria, by the way, guys. We have a shot to get our hands a 10 time on Valeria, one of the best fighters, bar none, inside the entire game. Probably the most used fighter in the end game, or certainly up there, top one, top two, top three. Now is the time to download. Now, listen, guys, I love Watcher of Realms so much that I upload on my second YouTube channel, Ash Watcher of Realms. I invite you to join me in my Watcher of Realms journey along with the other 13,100 of you guys. They're adding a lot of new features to the game. They have updates constantly in this game. A lot of new content. I can barely keep up. There's new bosses. There's new heroes. It's really, really fun. A lot to do, including Void Rift, right? But the coolest thing about this update, the very coolest thing, and I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to win on this, this auto battle. I'm not sure if I... Let, let me put it on the background here. Coolest thing about this update that's coming here in March is going to be you can actually play in the background. I'm not talking about when you're using other apps. I'm talking about like you can build heroes, you can experiment with different teams, you can focus on different comps, you can re-gear, you can do all kinds of stuff, guild wars, whatever, while you're actually fighting in the background, which to me is just like such a cool quality of life feature. They're also adding new mounts that you can use in the Void Rift where we are right now in the game. I think I'm gonna lose this battle. Uh, so that's really cool. That's where things went wrong, right there in the corner. I need to go in there and fix that team, but it's not just Valeria, one of the best and most wanted defenders inside the entire game is Broke here. He's also on a 10x event. Let me show you. I'm lucky enough to have my myself a little Broke here here. Look at this dude. He has unkillable, unyielding, so basically he can stay alive for a while built into his kid. And as you would imagine from looking at him, he's all about the freeze. All right, guys, I've said enough here. Make sure you take advantage and download Watcher of Realms today. Check out my YouTube channel while you're at it. Thank you for Watcher to Watcher of Realms for sponsoring today's video. We had a hell of a time trying to rank every mythical on your channel. And dude, I mean, that was impossible, right? That was so crazy. Yeah, it was so fun. It was, though. It was yeah. so hard, man. I thought like the free to play one that we did the other week was tough. And I think this one was probably even harder. So, yeah, I was having yeah. a blast. But Dude, Oof, some of these new ones, especially, oh my god, they're so busted. Uh, they are. Anyway, check that channel out. It'll be in the description below, guys. Uh, to, but here, you know, we actually got on a rant. Uh, maybe, <laughs> maybe, should I say you got on a rant? <laughs> I definitely got on a rant, yeah, for sure. Towards the end of the video on on, on Drock's channel, and it all stemmed from Night Queen Crixia was the, uh, the start of the conversation because I had her high, high on my list. You had her high, but not quite as high as mine. Stop it. Sorry to be such a spoiler. You know, you were talking, well, you got into a polymorph rant, right? You got into a yeah. polymorph rant. Yeah. And, yeah. and you said in the video, I think that... That, like uh, scratch said this as well like back in the day but like either way it's absolutely true that and, and newer players probably don't even recognize this because polymorph's been around longer than i think that i i remember in my head like it's been like uh, maybe like since blessings obviously and that was like a year and a half or two years ago right like yeah, that's a while yeah, about a, I think a year and a half at this point year and a half it feels yeah. like it's yesterday man <laughs> but the thing is is it really did change the game nothing in the game was more responsible, and this is the quote that you know you, you shared, nothing in the game was more responsible for more vaulted champions than Polymorph. We obviously had the big rebalance of Polymorph. I guess I wanna start there, and, and, and even if you don't think this problem pertains to you, maybe you're not a massive PVP uh, player, I still think it's a conversation worth, you know, that you guys will pick something out of because it really goes down to the fundamental balancing of the game and how one little change can have a major major impact on literally hundreds of, of champions uh so let's start with the the rework or the nerf because you corrected me on your video and you're absolutely right it wasn't a nerf to polymorph it was a buff why yeah so this is the thing like i think a lot of people don't realize this but on the surface it looks like a nerf right they've limited polymorph to now triggering once per champion 
whenever you use an ability that strips, you know, buffs or whatever else. But what people don't realize is that simultaneously, because they changed blessings to have every single stat bonus, what has happened is that now champions that would never have run Polymorph before, like for example, a Rhodos yep. or a Hierophant Lazarius or damage dealers that are not defensive based, now they have Polymorph. So instead mm -hmm. of facing two or three champions with Polymorph, you are now facing three or four champions with Polymorph, which means increased chances to get sheeped, which is happening. Like I got sheeped five times in one fight the other night because every champion on the enemy team had, had six star six Polymorph. Star polymorph. All of them. All of them. So the reason it was a buff is because now even nukers, basically every every champion that, especially a six star uh, 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 awakened champion, is is now switching over because all the stats are available. So it had a profound impact on the sheer number of situations that you encounter polymorph in general, which overshadowed the nerf. You know, the the one time yeah. per whatever one check per ability per champion. Yeah. Okay. Without a doubt, without a okay. doubt, it's so much more prevalent, and it is it is so toxic. It is oh god, it is so toxic. Yeah. So while some people might be watching, maybe maybe not a lot, but maybe a few might be watching and thinking to themselves like, okay, why is this like? Why are people making such a big deal about about polymorph? So so they turn into a sheep and like whatever, like adjust with the meta or whatever. Why is it a big deal? Why why is it why do so many people have a problem? Like I know the answer to this. I'm just playing devil's advocate. Why do so many people have a problem with polymorph? Yeah. So let me try to break it down as to why it is such a disruptive thing in the game. Yeah. Um, and by the way, this is gonna be I'm gonna share this directly with Plarium. So I don't have like high hopes, but I hope to be constructive enough here so they actually see that, like, yes, this is something that we can easily address. And it's a very bad experience for the yeah. game. It's a bad thing for the game. I like saying no. It lowers their enthusiasm. Anyway, sorry. Go ahead. Now that yeah. I know it's going to be shared directly with Plarium. Um, Plarium, I love you. You're the best. The best of all time. The best that there ever was. You guys are tremendous. Incredible people. Uh, you're f***ing with me. I can tell. You're a bad actor. Actually, I love the game. but so obviously, Of course. But, yeah, okay. yeah. We both do. This the, is why we want the best for it, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So the, the reason why is this, Ash? Because first and foremost... Almost every champion in the game has some form of a debuff or something they do to apply to the enemy team. So whether even it's, it's a nuker like Leorius or, you know, an actual debuff champion like Mikage, these skills are an innate part of their kit. And the problem is, is that a lot of times you either can't use the skills at all because you're afraid of becoming a sheep or alternatively, you have to make the accuracy so low on some of these champions that their skills are essentially worthless. So. Let's start with that because that is what has directly led to so many champions being vaulted in the first place. But that's not even remotely close to the problem. And I'll give you a, a great example here of, of why Polymorph is so destructive. And the reason is because of how ludicrously overpowered it is mm -hmm. relative to everything else in the game. So let's say you have somebody, they're Mikage. They place a stun debuff, they turn into a sheep. All right, well, now that means they've lost half their health. Yeah. That means you can't get that off because it's uncleansable unless yeah. you have a shoes then on your team. Shoes yeah, break this down. Team. Like, because I, yeah. I, I know, I think we intuitively think we know, but then you like put it all together and it's like, wait, 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 this is, it's bonkers. But in some of it, it's not even, you don't even know about it, the speed thing. But yes. anyway, go. Yeah, yeah some yeah. of it's not even in the skill description, but so. It's not even in the description. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which yeah. is insane. So you lose half your health. Half you health. lose every ability you have a you cannot cleanse that debuff you can't cleanse sheep because it's protected can't it can it. last up to two, two turns, turns which is insane uh on top of that it also uh it also drops your turn meter essentially to zero when you pop out of it so you have no actions popping out of it and on top on top of that even more is uh is oh my god what was i gonna say what was the other thing ash uh, the speed uh, the speed the speed yes the speed thank you the speed it drops your champion speed to 150 like that is incredibly slow especially in live arena when people are running their nukers at the top level with 330 340 350 speed so you can hypothetically have a cp get turned into a sheep and she's for out two of the turn yeah two turns she's out of the battle like she's basically done. Yeah. And you've yeah. lost now. This is the thing. There's no countering this. That is the most frustrating aspect of because of how strong it is. You can't 
counter it. And when you can't counter stuff or feel like you're completely at a loss to deal with it, that's when it ends up being frustrating. What the French call les incompetents. And like I said, the other night, and this happens every night on Live Arena, and I do high level Live Arena, it happens all the time. Either you are getting sheep or the enemy is getting sheep every single battle. And it is so incredibly frustrating to put together a team that's like, oh man, I picked the right champions. I have really good builds. I'm really proud of this team. It makes perfect sense from an arena perspective. And then to get absolutely nuked by Polymorph RNG is the most frustrating thing I've ever experienced in Raid. Yeah, it's terrible. People, you're right. And people hate RNG, right? Like we, we inherently, it's not fun to be a victim of RNG, right? So it's unpredictable in nature, right? And then yes. on top of that, I think I want to stay, I just want to emphasize again, the speed that like you're not just you're not only stuck as a sheep, but some of you anecdotally might might realize this. I know I realized it, and I didn't even know how pervasive it really was because it's not even the game. You would never know, right? But like, it's you get bumped down to 150 speed, so you're stuck as a sheep. And if it's two turns, you're stuck as a sheep forever. There's no way to cleanse it. It can it can trigger off passives. It can trigger on you know like on all the time on buff removals. Like you guys know the mechanics of of the ability, but. Think about what it does to not just the feel bad. Like, dude, I, we were talking on your channel. It's like nothing feels worse in this game than a two turn sheep because you're like, OK, well, yeah. this whatever. This is so stupid. You know, like it's easy, you know, bro. It's easy it, at that point. You're going yeah. to lose that battle. Ninety nine percent of the time you lose. It's over. Congratulations. You lose. You're a two turn <laughs> sheep. Right. So nothing feels worse inherently. Like and why do we want players to feel bad? Right. So let's let's talk about why they introduced Polymorph to begin with. Right. Because. It was this game for a long time was arguably more annoying than polymorph life because you know back in my day i don't even know how long you've been playing uh Drock, three like, years three okay years, so yeah. like you remember that it was like every battle was a speed race or a hegemon torment race like that's all it yep. was like it was hegemon torment speed and that's yep. the whole game you know there was no stone skin there was nothing to slow the game down to give other players that didn't buy every speed pack every single time a shot so that sucked but then they overcompensated by not yes. only adding stone skin, but adding this redonkulous uh, polymorph, right? And yes. the overall impact, like, why don't you talk? I want to hear more from you, your perspective, because again, if you, those of you who don't know, Drock, you're like a high, high, high end arena, uh, live arena and arena specialist. But like, it goes beyond that. Like, you're a student of the game too, you know? And I, I want to. I want to get your take on how did it impact, you know, the diversity of options at the top and, and beyond, you know, yeah. uh, for champions. Yeah. The short answer is immensely. We're talking like overnight, incredible shift in everything related to how arena is played in both classic or in uh, live arena. And, and the other part of it too, is like, even just looking at the meta right now, when you look at classic arena, and this might change with some of the champions they're introducing, I say might because polymorph is still a problem, yeah. is that, you know, it's the same champions on almost every single team. It's Taurus, Marichka, UDK, and then somebody else, Seafy, yep. Nightly yep. Trixia, yeah, whatever. And the reason for that is, is because you can't counter these champions because you can't debuff these champions. You can't block passives on these champions. Yes. And that is solely due to polymorph so you don't have any way of countering this stuff which is why the meta has been so stale and the same thing for the last year but so basically what it's done is it has limited your options your champion pool to the same 15 to 20 champions at the high level 99 percent of the time in battles and the thing is you know there's a quote it, it, the quote is the road to hell is paved with good intentions yeah, right indeed and the intentions, I think, were good behind Polymorph and Stoneskin. Like, hey, everything's a speed battle. We got to find a way to make it so that it's not entirely speed or having one or two champions. But like you said, they have gone so far in the other directions that now everything has become a absolute just slug fest, just slow plotting. And then on top of that, so insanely RNG based. That you feel like even if you have the better team, even if you pick the champions that make sense to counter somebody, because this is a game about countering different champions with different abilities, that half the time it doesn't even matter. That you're still going to lose because if you become a sheep, it's not really going to matter that you have the better team. You're just going to get owned. Yeah. So 
there there is there is a better way ash i i know there is a better way and i know we can get there I, please don't i can't i don't want to know I and know that's what i want to get to now because i want to i want to keep the conversation productive because i think we're both acknowledging that they're i mean you just said it yourself right is there are some good intentions and there's some reasoning behind why they did this and honestly a little bit of rng isn't necessarily a bad thing because it can let somebody like listen having a little bit of RNG can also mitigate the difference between somebody who has plus four Siffy and Marushka every single time. And it can give you a shot, you know, in some situations, yeah. right? So a, a little bit isn't bad. Yeah. A little bit isn't bad. And it gives you those kind of moments where you're like, oh my God, I can't believe it happened. I yeah, won. Yeah, 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 yeah. Holy smokes. Exactly. It's like the trick shot in the NBA or something. Like yeah. sometimes it's cool to have a little bit of some, the half court, the hall or whatever, the Hail Mary in football. But having it this prevalent in the game is is i mean to your point it first of all it boxes out so many amazing champions right like yeah. so like so, it, everybody from like let's just start with an epic like madam saris man like she used to be the goat and she should be she's like so good right and and even even like protection sets and stuff like that right like it's 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 weird because we have responses to madam saris yeah. That, that, that are built into the game now, you know, to that, buff strippers, we have protection and like we have solutions to all these problems that we used to have that were annoying before we have solutions. So with in stone skin as, as well. So with all that being said, let's talk about solutions. Like, what do you think would be a happy medium that you would love Plarium to consider as a viable solution to not just delete it from the game as much as some people would like that, but like, wh where do they go? How, how, where can they go from here that you think would satisfy uh, the player base that, you know, that, that you deal with, that you talk to? Yeah, I, I think there is like a happy medium to be found here. And look, I'll be the first one to admit that I was absolutely an immense polymorph hater for a very long period of time, and I still <laughs> am not a huge fan of it. So, yes. of course, like my preferred solution is to You've come a long way, though. You've come a long way. I've come a long way. I've been educated in some ways. <laughs> but here's what I'll say. To, to me, there, there are a couple things that they could do to truly make it balanced so that it is not so frustrating at the high level. And I think also what I've seen recently is people even at the lower levels are starting to have more problem with it, more problems with it. So I'm like, okay, now you know how it feels when you're just <laughs> in every single arena right. fight. But the first thing I would do is when this blessing nerf or balance got announced, they said once per enemy turn. And a lot of this took that to mean that once per enemy turn means only one champion can benefit from it, similar to intimidating presence, right? So the very first thing I would do to balance this is I would do exactly that. Only one champion once per turn, no matter what the action is, no matter if you're applying four debuffs or stripping and debuffing in the same thing like Ramantu does, you get one check and only one champion can have that check. So that means you only have a okay. 20 to 25% chance of becoming a sheep, which is still, by the way, pretty big. If you think about RNG, like that's a quarter of the time that you champion- You're someone to sheep, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's still really, really powerful in my opinion. But that is, again, that is not far enough. That is the start. That gets us to a much better place, but it doesn't resolve the issue of the fact that the sheep debuff by itself is still incredibly broken strong. Sir? Sir, are, 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 are you listening to me, sir? So what I would also do is, while doing that first, I would say, look, your health, it no longer gets cut in half. That to me was always one of the craziest things about sheep, because you're already taking away a champion's abilities. You're taking away a champion's ability to do damage, to protect, to heal, to do whatever. But not only that, you're also cutting their health in half. Like now when they get out of that ability, they're going to start at zero turn meter. The other team's going to go and they're going to die. So you're essentially yep, yep. guaranteeing that champion gets killed. That is too strong. The health needs to remain the same as whatever it was before the sheep debuff was placed. And then the other thing that I would do Agreed. would be, yeah. no way should it be two turns that is still way too powerful and no way should it slow your champion to 150 speed. Like that is ludicrous. If you want to place a decreased speed debuff as a part of it where it lowers your champion's speed by the same amount of that, that's already pretty punitive, but it's not insanely broken. So I would do those things. And the other thing I know they're not going to do, but I think would also be an incredible way to solve this in general, would be to make it a cleansable debuff. Because then you have a reason to bring in people like Cardio more often, or reason to bring in other cleansers that don't really play in the meta anymore. So they just, they've, they've got to actually 
lower the strength, right? They've had to consider these. The, I, one would assume, I, right? Because I, I, I don't know. I don't know because they announced this six, seven, eight months ago, and it's the exact thing they announced all the way back. I think in that video you did with Cirilla, actually. Yeah. If I remember correctly, yeah, you had that yeah, exclusive. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, yeah. I'm assuming you've got a better Hitler story, but no, but then maybe I, don't interrupt. And I think so many people have given them feedback, both content creators and high level arena players and everybody else. And I, I feel like the vast majority of the community knows that it's not, it still needs more. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, it just mm -hmm. needs more. It's just not there. Like you can have it in the game and have it be a part of what you do, but not have it be so incredibly frustrating and destructive that you're just like, you know what? I don't think I'm playing live arena tonight. I don't think I can do it. Like I just don't, I can't deal with it. I hear yeah. you. No, I totally hear you. And I think that out of all your solutions, first of all, they're all, I, I would love any of them, right? I would love any of them at this point. And uh, personally, I was really slow to come around on Polymorph. Like, I didn't hate it as much as everybody else did out the gate. I was like, okay, maybe there's some, maybe there is some counterplay here. Maybe it opens up new, like, you know, whatever. But it's 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 irresistible and it's like it's i mean there's nothing you could do about it you know i agree with you two things that i like out of all your solutions i mean i love them all but like what i would say the easiest way would just make it cleansable you know like and i know they i don't think they do that because they already have like a remove sheep with like shuzen and stuff and i don't think they're going to move away from that kind of an ability but like cleansability would be awesome right because it would still be as disruptive but it would make way and make space for so many cool champions, like end to end game, you start to see different champ. Even in the mid game, you start to see different champions again, like a Wither the Crown or a Mithrala Lifebane. Some of those other compelling cleansers who just aren't used, not like they were at least when they were released, right? And and it would open up a lot of a lot of doors for a lot of cleansers, right? And it would bring that yeah. back into the meta. Uh, the other way though is just to your point. It's just like, gosh, not make it so pre like they could just take the chances way down. They could never I, I I want them to take away the two turn polymorph, man. Yeah. That's like nothing feels worse than the double RNG hit of a two turn polymorph. You're like, come on, man. Oh, you just want to brutal. throw your phone out the window or whatever, you yeah. know? Well, because it's, it's it's you're gonna lose, basically. You're if gonna it's the lose. wrong champion that, that happens, you're done then. It doesn't matter what else you did, it's and, over. You know, and you the know? other super subtle thing that they could do potentially, and what you what you hit on too a little bit at least is just get a, get rid of the speed decrease. I mean, that's like, I don't think that would like solve the entire. I don't want that to be the only change, but golly, that feel it's so awful, man. Like <laughs> it's, it's just like it sounds like a it sounds like a uh, just an absolutely hilarious list when you're like, yeah, it does this and it does this and then oh yeah, it does that and it does this. Yeah. Just, wow, it, good God, what does it not do? Like it does everything. And to your point, or like or give a little bit of a who knows, there's a billion directions they could go, right? But like give it a little bit of a uh maybe they Maybe after Polymorph wears out, maybe you get an instant turn or something. Like maybe there's a, a reverse mechanic that 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 you know. I, I don't know. Sure. There's so many different things you could do. But man, oh, after hearing it's you preach on it on your channel, I'm like, you, we got to do something on my channel because it's it's right. I mean, like I just don't like what it does to the game in terms of like how it, it boxes out so many champions man it yes. sucks you know yes like this game is at its most fun again i think they were trying to solve an important problem but this game is at its most fun when you go when you talk about pvp and you go into an arena and you're like i have so many different cho choices i have so many different options i can't wait to bust out this cool champion that i just picked or that cool champion that i just summoned or or this one that i built and you're excited about that because you're like oh man I could use a Kaimar here. I could use a Lady yeah. Kimi. Yeah. Or I could use, like you said, a Mithrala. You can use any of those, you know? You can't. You cannot. Like, if you I mean, try you can, to use but that. Like, yeah, yeah, you're in yeah, trouble. You, you can, know? but you're, you're yeah. really, like, you're, you're probably going to get wrecked. And it's just one of those things where, like I said, I've come around to understanding that it's going to be a part of the game. But if they could just find a way to truly balance this so it isn't so oppressive and instead is, like, a small deterrent but is not something that just says, you know what? You want to bring a Kimi in? Good luck, buddy. It's yeah. over for you. Yeah. You're yeah. done. Yeah. And and that's the thing. I miss that. That is like that's what got me into this game. That passion for arena. And I real and I also and I think that you know this. Like arena is definitely not most people's you know favorite part of raid. Like they have other things that are a favorite. But for those of us who do play high level arena or do love it, even if we're not high level. I just want to have that feeling again where it's like, yeah, I can put together a cool champion strategy here 
and not get punished for champions doing what they're supposed to do. Um, that's like, that's the big thing for me. And I want that back. I hear you. I hear you, man. I hear you. I miss the days a bit. <laughs> I miss the days of the, the debuffers actually having a spot in the game, you know, like, yeah. And it really sucks when they release some of these really compelling, awesome new champions that have a lot of debuffs and you're like, wow, this could be awesome, but it's just not possible right now in the game. And I think that's yeah. like, that's the crux of it, right? It's like a but like hundreds of champions that we've all invested in over the years are moot at this point in the in the arena. And then all the awesome ones that keep adding, it's just like, yeah, I wish, I wish I could use that champion, you know, but I can't. So <laughs> yeah. uh yeah, man, yeah. I think that I think that you've done a great job kind of articulating the problem and some really awesome, viable potential solutions. So now let's see A, how my audience feels about this in the comments below, and B, what Plarium does if they say anything. Again, I'll send this video to, to Plarium because I think that, again, we've done a good job like outlining that we get it. We get why we added, why you added this to the game, but I think we speak for the majority of the community. I think it's dangerous for YouTubers or whatever to speak for others, but from every all the feedback that I've seen from my audience, and, and I'm sure, sure the same for yours, especially. It's just like, it makes for a really bad time and it doesn't feel like it adds much to the game, you know? Yeah, that's that's my and, number one issue with it. I yeah. want this game to be as fun as possible, right? Like, yeah. and, and I think at its best, this game is super engrossing. It's why we became content creators and sure. what drew us in as a community. And there's so many awesome things and such a breadth of content. I just want this part of the game that I love to be in a place where I can really truly enjoy it and not feel like I have no control over what happens in any battle. 100% aligned, man. We are on the same page. TBD if they ever go in and make any more changes, but we will uh, we will keep everybody up to date with uh, with any developments that do come from this video, and I can't wait to read the comments here. In the meantime, guys, perfect time to go ahead and check out the collab that we did on Drox channel. Again, I already gave you guys what it was about, but it was super, super fun. Uh, Drox, thanks for joining me, man. Really, it was a pleasure Dude. talking to you you ash thank you so much as always yep. man uh so excited to come on so really appreciate you likewise guys thanks for watching let us know how you feel in the comments below and as always take care guys